In this video, we will add wind animation to the flower. Wind animation is a bit more complex because there are lots of settings that influence each other. We will first look at all available options and explore how they work, and then we will decide which ones we will use in the model. This video has quite a lot of information to take in, but it's necessary to understand the whole wind and breeze concept so that we can then apply it successfully to any type of model. To make a plant move in the wind, we need to go to the wind tab and check receive wind. Without this checkbox, no other setting will have any effect. Now that the plant reacts to wind forces, we should look at the wind that is blowing through the scene and to which the plant is going to react. The settings for the wind in the scene are in the Atmosphere Editor. We can open the Atmosphere Editor by clicking this icon or by going to Display Atmosphere Editor or by pressing F4. The settings in here are the same ones that almost every atmosphere in view uses. So when we want to edit the settings, TPF issues a warning. The message is a reminder for using consistent wind settings in all your plant factory project files. If you would like to use a plant in view, you should always configure all your plant models with these same breeze settings. This will ensure coherency between all the plants in a scene and the plants are also ready to use right out of the box with almost any atmosphere. You can also save a breeze configuration and reload it, so that you can quickly check the plant behavior under stormy wind conditions, for example. So the wind that's blowing onto a plant consists of two different influences that are combined to produce the final wind effect. The first influence is the ambient motion breeze, and it is controlled with the first four sliders, and the second influence is the gusts of wind group. Let's look at the ambient motion breeze first. The intensity is the strength of the wind. Stronger winds cause stronger movements. Pulsation is the speed of the movement caused by the breeze. Uniformity controls whether all plants in a scene move independently from each other or not, and turbulence adds some random variation to the intensity within the plant so that not all parts in a single plant move equally strong, which would look too perfect and unnatural. The gusts of wind are simpler to control. They appear randomly on top of the ambient motion breeze and create stronger and more directional movements than what the basic breeze produces. The amplitude is the strength of the gusts of wind and the frequency determines the average probability for how often a gust of wind occurs per second. To make a plant react to wind, we need to turn on animation settings for each node that should move. We can then configure the animation strength individually for each node, or we can use global strength settings on the wind tab and increase or decrease the animation strength for a specific node type, for example all segment nodes, in the entire plant at once, which is much easier than going into node after node and changing the animation strength in each node individually. Inside of the nodes we can specify whether a node reacts to both the ambient motion breeze and the gusts of wind, or to just one, or to no influences from the atmosphere editor at all. All nodes can react to the ambient motion breeze, but only the segment node and blades in a segment node can react to gusts of wind. However, when a gust of wind randomly occurs in the atmosphere, it also increases the pulsation and the intensity of the ambient motion breeze. This causes fluttering and rustling leaves or branches in a plant. So even when a node cannot directly react to gusts of wind, the gusts of wind still have an indirect influence because they also boost the ambient motion breeze. Now let's turn on wind in the stalk node. In a segment node, the wind settings are located on the influences tab and on all other nodes they are located on the transform tab. First, we will turn on the ambient motion breeze. 
Plant Factory will issue a warning that it needs to create bones for the animation. The more bones a plant has, the longer the animation takes to compute. We can show the bones rig that was created by clicking this button. And we can also see the current number of bones in the plant information. There is also a maximum limit of bones that Plant Factory can create for a plant. And this limit can be set on the meshing tab. There is also a global bone boost slider, so if you feel that the animation looks too stiff or is not detailed enough, you can add more bones to the entire plant, which will increase the animation quality. Let's see what the ambient motion breeze looks like. With this button, we can play the wind animation. When we do a right click, we can set the length of the animation, the frame rate for the preview, and whether the animation should loop seamlessly. When you have a huge tree with lots of leaves, you can speed up the wind preview by lowering the frame rate. Plant Factory will interpolate between the frames, so even a low frame rate is relatively smooth. Let's increase the strength of the ambient motion breeze influence on the stalk. Now we see more clearly what kind of movement the setting creates. It's sort of a random jiggle, which is good for grasses or flowers that sway gently in the breeze. Currently, the movement only happens back and forth and not to the sides, but we can specify the animation to our liking by opening the advanced settings. In this dialog, we can indicate the directions in which the geometry can move. For example, when we uncheck X and check Y, the stalk now moves from side to side. The amplitude is the maximum strength that the geometry is allowed to move with the default resettings from the atmosphere editor. The speed is obviously the speed of the movement and the random field indicates whether the instances react to the randomness created by the turbulent setting or not. Further down, we also have controls for the fluttering boost that occurs because of the gusts of wind. So we can indicate how much the intensity and the speed of the breeze are increased when a random gust appears. All other nodes have the same advanced settings, and leaves, for example, are deformed according to the rules set in this dialog. For billboard leaves, the wind animation works a bit differently. Billboard leaves are just a flat polygon, so they cannot really be deformed. Instead, the illusion of wind movement is created by resizing, slanting, stretching and moving the billboards. Next, let's turn off the ambient motion and turn on the gusts of wind motion with a high strength. In contrast to the controlled jiggling movement of the ambient motion, the gusts of wind have a random direction and the duration of the movement is a lot longer and calmer. We can also add some gravity to the influence, which means that the gusts will additionally force the plant towards the ground. Now let's turn our attention to the circle with the arrow in the 3D view. This arrow represents a constantly blowing gust of wind that can be manually added to the breeze from the atmosphere editor. In view, this is the blue wind triangle in the top view, or in the case of ecosystem instances, a ventilator object. Only segments that have the gusts of wind motion active will be influenced by this constant force. By using the circle, we can increase the strength of this constant wind. And by rotating the arrow, we can change the wind direction. These settings can also be found on the Wind tab in the Constant Wind group. When we further increase the strength, the plant suddenly goes real crazy. This happens because of the influence on breeze settings. Just like the random gusts of wind, the constant wind also increases the speed and the intensity of the ambient motion breeze. So when we turn this down to about, let's say, 20%, the plant motion is back to normal, even under strong wind conditions. Back in the stalk parameters, 
there is one more wind setting left and that's flexibility. This setting is a general global strength setting for both the ambient motion breeze and the gusts of wind in the node. Instead of increasing both the breeze and the wind intensity individually, you can simply increase the flexibility to create a stronger movement for both. Additionally, the flexibility setting has the orange primal and the green parent curves so that we can use it to restrict wind movement to certain parts of the geometry only. We've got one group of wind settings left and these are the wind settings for blades. The flower uses blades for the pedals, so let's go to the pedals node. Blades can also react to both the ambient motion breeze and to the gusts of wind. The ambient motion breeze in blades, however, is a procedural wind effect that does not require bones and which cannot be exported to other applications. It will only work in view. So the ambient motion produces a wave-like pattern similar to wind that's blowing through a flag or over a field of grass. The amplitude is the strength of the effect and the frequency defines the size of the waves that ripple through the geometry. Lower values create less waves and higher values create more waves. To activate the wind and gust motion of blades, we first need to turn on the wind and gust motion for the invisible segment cylinder in this node that runs through the blade. Even though we just added the wind and gust motion to the segment, nothing is really moving, not even that much when we increase the strength. This happens because of the now accessible influence of blades setting. When the strength of this option is set to a high value, segments that have blades attached to them will move less than segments that do not have blades. By lowering the setting, we can gradually add wind and gust motion back to the node. But we are really just interested in the wind and gust motion of the blades, so let's reset the influence setting and turn on the gust motion for the blades. This setting makes blades flap up and down, just like the wings of a bird. With gravity, we can increase the tendency that the blade flaps more up or down. Finally, let's go to the wind tab. Earlier I explained that the tab is used to change the look of the animation for the entire plant at once. That's why the tab is organized into three groups. Global settings for all segment and also auto growth nodes. Global settings for all blades. And global settings for all leaf nodes, which also include wireboard nodes, balls and imported objects with the object node. For example, when you want to change the speed or the intensity of the ambient motion breeze motion for all segment nodes in the plant, it's easier to change the global sliders for speed and intensity in this segment breeze group rather than editing half a dozen individual nodes by hand. You can also specify the default advanced breeze options on the wind tab. Unless we override these settings in a specific node as I demonstrated earlier, this configuration on here will be used for all segment nodes in the model. Removing randomness makes all instances move identical in speed and strength, as if there was no turbulence active in the atmosphere editor. This looks very unnatural, but it can be useful for testing out various strength and speed settings. And when you want to change the indirect influence that random gusts from the atmosphere have on the breeze motion, you can use the fluttering controls to decrease or even disable this effect entirely so that random gusts of wind do not have an indirect effect on the basic ambient motion breeze. And these same principles are true for the wind settings subgroup, which controls the strength of the wind and gust movement for all segment nodes and thus also the influence of the constant wind on all segments. Each group has also settings for boosting the flexibility or the global animation strength according to certain geometry criteria. In a tree, for example, you can make longer or thinner branches move stronger, just like in the real world, 
or you can increase the flapping motion of bigger grass plates, petals or palm leaves, or you can make leaves in a tree move stronger on the top of a plant or on the outside. So this was a lot to take in, but this covers really all the settings related to wind animation and now we can finally apply the correct settings to our flower model. First, let's animate the stalk. Flowers usually sway gently in the breeze, so let's turn on the ambient motion breeze for a slight gentle wavy motion. When the weather is stormy and wind is constantly blowing over a landscape, flowers with long stalks usually react to the constant wind and are bent into the wind direction. So we also need the gusts of wind motion. Because the breeze from the atmosphere editor is quite gentle, I think the stalk moves too much, so I will decrease the flexibility to 0.3. The branching stalk needs to react to wind as well. Here I will only add the gusts of wind, because the branching stalk is already moving with the basic breeze as it is attached to the main stalk, and when the main stalk moves, everything that is attached to it moves as well. Next, let's go to the leaves. Here the flexibility setting doesn't control the strength, but the look of the motion. When it is set to 1, the entire leaf moves up or down without any deformation. This makes it look quite stiff. With lower flexibility settings, we can gradually restrict the leaf movement to certain parts of the leaf geometry. For example, when flexibility is set to 0, only the tip of the leaf moves ever so slightly. Personally, I want something with a nice fall off look in between, so I'll go with 0.3. Also, let's add some randomness to the breeze strength by going with 0.75 plus minus a variation of 0.25. Finally, for the petals, some slight wavy deformation might look good, so I will turn on the ambient motion of blades. We won't use the wind and gust motion for the blades, as flapping petals don't quite make sense in this context. We're not really seeing much of a motion in the petals, because the influence of blade setting is too high and this removes all the movement. So let's reduce this down to something around 0.08, so that we get a slight wavy movement within the blades. And as a final check, let's look at the flower with strong constant wind conditions, to make sure that the animation looks fine under stronger atmospheric conditions as well. For this I'm going to increase the strength of the constant wind on the wind tab. Because we already reduced the intensity of the constant wind on the breeze to 20%, the animation works quite well with stronger winds. This sums up everything there is to know about wind animation in Plant Factory. In the next video, we will add presets to the flower.